Hello and welcome to Fairway Media's coverage of the 2020 Goondocks Open. Thanks to our 2020 coverage sponsors, Gripped and All Day Disc Golf, and our tournament sponsors, Infinite Discs, Discraft Discs, and Oregon Disc and Wildlife, and Fort George Brewery in Astoria, Oregon. We got a barn burner for you today. We got Team Sexy Channel, Chandler Fry and Nate Sexton versus, uh, I'm just gonna call them Team Portland. We got Denny X and Steven Sines two fantastic players from Portland. And then we also have a few groups right behind us. We got Cole Redolin and Brody battling for that uh, first place spot. Joining me today is Cole Redolin. How are you doing, man? I'm doing pretty well. Fantastic. Are we good to go? Are we good go, to go? go. <laughs> I am. All right, hole one's pretty straightforward. 420 feet, um, it's averaging just above par for the field. And uh, this is actually going to be a pretty fun shot. What do you think is going to happen right now, Cole? <laughs> uh, not throw it into the ground like first round. Um, how about how about would you would you have guessed this? Oh no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no. Just wait, just wait. <laughs> Where do you think it went? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I uh, I thought out of my hand. I thought I just smashed the window of a Subaru Outback. But uh, actually, it ended up <laughs> in the car, which car? just <laughs> hanging out <laughs> the super the green Outback right there, just hanging out on the front seat. <laughs> it went through the window. <laughs> it went through the crack in the window. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. So that's how my uh, second round started. Let's hope Nate can <laughs> shut you up because that wasn't <laughs> ideal. No. I think he's throwing a. Uh, I think he was like going with a sidewinder or like a, I don't know. That was an Excalibur. That's completely wrong. He was thinking about doing like a flip up or something. But uh, pretty Great. decent shot. Yeah. But those hay bales are really obstructing the putt. Yeah, that's. The really surprising uh, stat on this hole is zero people birdied it. Whoa, zero. I would expect it to be at least, like, at least one throw in or someone getting up there, but that's surprising. For sure. There was a seven, though. And oh, I don't know how that know. happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to name names. They know who they are. They, they, they have the story. But uh, Yeah, no comment on that. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Denny Axe rocking probably the coolest pair of shorts I've ever seen on the course. In the highest pretty dope. His style is on point. Yeah, I've known Denny and Steven for quite a long time. They've been in the disc golf scene for 10 plus years. So it's great to get a, be able to play a tournament around with them. Yeah, Brody mentioned a lot about them, but I'd, I'd never heard of them. So it's, it's going to be really interesting to see how they play this. For sure. And I think, t wasn't today like the 100 degree day? Yeah, today was hot. My putters yeah. were so sticky. <laughs> Oh, great bid from Denny. He probably thought that was in. That looked just fantastic. Win? Not much. And Steven rocking the TriFly Huck Lab dry fit. See if that'll help him get into the bucket. <laughs> oh, I like how fast he is. <laughs> A little more yoga this round. <laughs> There's me uh, stretching my groin muscles. Oh, oh. oh. more stretch. <laughs> Look <Jeez>. further. <laughs> Uh, Nate and I went for the um, gray shirt and gray pants approach, probably the most boring uh, color combo for uh, our outfits, but we like to lull people into a sense of, uh, oh, look at that. Oh. <laughs> that, was, that was a pretty good effort. It's a tough Ruin. putt, though. I Old love that spin putt. The whole so day is ruined, Nate says. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, no birdies on this hole. That just blows my mind. 420 feet, not that long. Yeah. Really, the only thing in the way is the, is the hay bales. That's crazy. I think, I think this the OB scares everyone. That's probably why. Yeah. Go over too much. I hear that. Uh, this hole is a par three, 330 feet. Really, the only danger is getting through the first little uh, tunnel of trees. Seems like I did that pretty well. I'm not sure where the there's the bucket. I'm about to circle's edge. Yeah, that's fine. As long as you get through the trees. For sure. And this is the approach that you're going to see from a lot of people with a solid forehand. It's just kind of hucking it out there and letting it uh, hook up with a hyzer angle.
who kind of a kind of a rough release right there. He's going to be probably circle circle two, maybe 50 50 ish feet on the right side. Good if it stays straight. Uh, I think it caught a tree, possibly. Yeah, it looks a little low. Yeah, Denny was trying to get into that truck window. He saw me on the on hole one and wanted to recreate it. Nice little trick shot. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of a lack of commitment on that shot, but he's got Steven on the team. Oh, good tree kick. There you go. It's a great kick. That's fine. We were dealing with a little bit of wind today, as you can see that little bush right there. That yeah, little headwind right. looks like? I think so, yeah. Not the easiest putt. You can actually hear the wind as well. Ooh. Boom. That was, a, putt. Somewhere, that was like a 50-50 putt. If I could yeah. have stayed, I could have fell, and it definitely stayed, so that's nice. Good birdie, Chandler. Yahoo! Man, this hole's hard. It's just a, it's just a big hyzer. That's all it is with OB on the right, and we got the Mando tree. You can see that. Uh, oh, oh gosh. I like that's that tree. Not, that's not good. <laughs> no. Is the is the right play to go as tight as possible that tree, or just high wide right? Like, I'm not. I don't know how to attack this hole really. Like you could go either way. It's a really defined line though to get up to the pin. Yeah. I think the wider, higher. Like, the more power you can get wider and higher, the better, I think. Kind of like this? Yeah. I think a little right. tighter, though. Yeah, he's bringing those uh, trees on the right side into play a little bit. That's still pretty great. Yeah, he's got a putt. He's like Sorry. 35, 40 feet. Going for a bit of a lower line. Good angle. That's got to get some power, like a power skip. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's more of a safe play, if anything. That's not That's not necessarily going to get to the basket. Yeah. If you can even get yourself a look on this hole, it's that's really more than you can ask for. A park job is just incredible. For sure. It's like you have to have, like, Thomas Gilbert to just – or Thomas Gilbert, Gilbert power to just have a – Easy hyzer at it. Yeah. Nice layup. <laughs> this hole is actually also averaging just above par, just barely above par, which uh, kind of makes sense because you're going to see more fours on this hole than you are going to see uh, twos. But definitely the average is going to be three-ish. So. Oh. <laughs> Oh, wow, look at that roll, too. So that is OB. If he doesn't hit those rocks, he is going to OB. But the best part about having a or being in a doubles tournament is you have a partner. So Yeah, that was a great bid. Let's see if the signs can connect. Yeah, Denny and Steven both are fantastic putters. Look at that. Oh, wow. How beautiful was that? And we are still still dealing with that same wind. It's a different direction, but uh, he still has a lot of factors to think about. And he just jams it in there and gets a stroke on uh, Nate and I. So that's pretty huge. Yeah, that's a good birdie, especially after missing hole two. When when you guys got that one, that was that was clutch. For sure. Yeah, and, and just like we mentioned in hole in, in round one, these baskets are uh, for pr professional players. They are uh, terrifying because <laughs> you just don't know if they're gonna if they're gonna stick or not. Yeah, always on edge when I put on these things. For sure. Looks like Denny kind of leaked that one a little bit too right. It's going to hit a tree and uh, he probably has a look at it, but a long look. Let's see what Steven can do here. All right. Oh. They're a great duo. They are, and they're like brothers too. Like the, yeah, you can see them in the background. They're absolutely just uh, keyed into each other. They just understand what each other's doing, and uh, they're just fun to play with. They're just good people. They're the kind of person that makes you play better, even if you're competing against them. So, 
for sure. Nice shot. Thanks. I corrected from yesterday, and I threw the same disc, the same ESP buzz, but uh, I think I might have gotten a little lucky through these branches, actually. No, maybe not. Just under. Was that buzz again? There you yeah. Go. Yeah. Maybe Nate's going with a maybe an orc or something. I, I'm gonna stop guessing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure this is an orc. Yeah. If you were to guess what this hole averaged in the second round, what would you guess? Probably in the second round alone. Yeah. Um, 2.6. Decent guess. It's actually way easier than that. It's 2.14. So we're wow. a, lot more, a lot of birdies going on. That's surprising. Yeah. It's a nice birdie frame from uh, Team Portland and Team Sexy Channel. We're going to move on to hole five, which is uh, also a par three. We it's short, but it's, it's very yeah. technical. There's uh, a lot of trees to deal with. <laughs> And it's uh, gonna be either like a uh, sidearm rat, which is what Nate's doing right here, just sidearm mid-range or something, or what you see Danny doing here, like a turnover mid-range. And that's a little left. Yeah, I like the turnover mid-range play because it comes into the green pretty slowly, so you can just kind of grab the ground. That's what Brody and I do. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like it. That was looking really good, but it just barely connected with one of the trees on the right and just shot it left. But they still have a putt. Oh, he came out hard with a big green disc. There's a comet from you? Yeah, head. big Z comet. And uh, it had the angle, just not the height. So if I I, I didn't execute it like I wanted, it, wanted to, but we'd have a putt. Oof. A little early for Nate there. Yeah. But actually, honestly, still a putt, so. You can see how these trees come into play on the green. Like, Denny is probably 35 feet away, I'd say, but he can't even putt. He has to actually like throw it at the basket because it's that a weird Anheuser angle. Yeah. But Steven's been uh, coming up clutch when uh, Denny's been missing. He's been, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> at so this good. point, Nate and I are just looking at each other like, this guy is like, on fire right now. I'm over here doing yoga again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, giving Nate a little rest on those. Yeah, he's uh he's throwing a lot of shanks right now, so he's gotta he's gotta warm up and rest up, you know. <laughs> That's called good friend right there. <laughs> What's the play on this one, Cole? That was a great shot. Pretty much just that. Take an overstable fairway driver or a mid-range if you can throw far. Um, just trying to miss one guardian tree right or left. And yeah, pretty standard hyzer. My play is just hit a tree. That's that's usually what I do. Then I Seems like a pretty deal. common play for most people on this hole. <laughs> it's, you can see the gap from the tee pad, but it's, just, it's still hard to hit. I don't really get it. Seems like a really simple shot, but when you get up there, it's a little tricky. Yeah, that was a pretty good roll. I didn't know that happened. Cool. Nate's looking to kind of recreate what Denny and myself just did. That's looking good. Oh, looks like he got a little kick. Yep. That's a want though. Yeah, just right or left. Good looking putt from Denny there. There he is. There we go. There's birdie upon birdies upon birdies. That's all you want out here. Yeah. Yeah, hole seven, another par three. Uh, only 265 feet. Not much uh, to think about on this hole. It's mostly just a little hyzer. Um, you can really throw anything you want. Um, it's essentially an open field hole because <laughs> the yeah. trees only really come into play at the basket. Yeah, it's really just, I mean, for you and I, probably just a buzz straight at it. Um, other players, like a rock three or so. It's like Danny has a bit of a release issue. A, lot, a few of his drives are going a little bit too right, but I'm sure he'll uh, figure that out by the in a couple holes and start throwing some straight ones. 
so Denny is right and Steven is left. They got some choices to make. I think both of those putts are about uh, 35, 40, 45 feet. I think you're going to be able to look it up. That's there we go. I'll take that. I think Nate was uh, going for the ace run here. That, and that was close. Ooh. Close to hitting uh, the cameraman. <laughs> but close to the basket, too. Just a little high and right. I would ace the long. Dang it. <laughs> we just put it out, out of the, to get out of the hole, off the hole, and let Denny and uh, Steven focus on their, on their life. This looks like they're going from the right drive. I don't know whose drive this was. That was Denny's drive. Okay. Ooh, good <laughs> Denny is all over the basket. And Nate and I are fully guessing, or fully just thinking that Steven's just going to nail this putt. Oh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and that is not a hole you want to miss. So getting a bar, uh, par on that, you're definitely losing strokes to the rest of the field. Because yeah. everyone else is going to get that hole. Ooh, yeah, averaged at 2.07, probably the easiest hole in the course. So, this hole is not the easiest hole in the course. No, this is this is like a straight to fairly like over that. stable finish along yeah. the road. OB on the right. Oh man, you just did it great again. Yeah, I got a little scared and put it left. I want like I, want, I didn't want to recreate what happened the first round where I uh, hit right and rolled straight to have like yeah. a thirty foot putt. So Nate and I both kind of decided to play with the trees on the on the left side and hopefully get a putt. I think it worked out. Yeah. That looks really nice. He's kind of flirting with the OB line, but it's going to skip up there really nice. Oh my gosh. Um, oh no. Looks like he'll stay in. Yeah, that was fine. Steven throw, his form is pr pretty unique, but it's, it looks good. It looks smooth, and there's a lot of power in it. Yeah. Great birdie from uh, Nate and myself. Yeah, it's kind of a gamble when you hit that hillside because you really don't want to roll. It's just got to sit or it's going to roll. Yeah. And good too. <sighs> Lots of birdies going on right here. This is kind of a unique, unique perspective. That was from the basket. What we're trying to do is throw a big flex, um, preferably to the right of that uh, house right there, a little high. Make the corner. And have it flex back to the basket, which is located in the trees. You can see it right there. Nah, that's about what you want to do. Oh my gosh! Did you seriously just park that? I'm, I, I might have. I, I feel like when, even when I'm playing against Nate or if I'm playing with him, I get, I just, I play better. Do you, do you have those players that like Scott Withers and Nate Sexton are the two players that doesn't matter when I like, we can be in last place, but if I'm playing with them, I'm just gonna play better than I, if I wasn't. No, oh, yeah, as soon as I moved up to MPO from MA1, I started getting significantly better just as a player. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Playing with Scotty and Nate. For sure. Great shot. Oh, my gosh. This is this is not an easy hole. No, <laughs> you can't not see easy at all. It. It's, uh, yeah, it's just impressive to see these throws. Steven wants that one back. I'll be fine with Danny's though. <laughs> you know, maybe we should move that back like 15 feet. I gotta give a shout out to um, a buddy of mine from Oregon who uh, has run some tournaments down there. He's a pretty big name in the scene, uh, Mike Gillespie. He uh, he actually, I was out here for a practice round, and We're I was gonna a whole, do uh, a whole ahead three dollars per person for Starframe. All donations will go to Don't Shoot PDX. Please feel free to match donations. It's all appreciated. There we go. Listen to Danny. Look up Don't Shoot PDX. Great organization. Doing a lot of good work in Portland. But I was going to say, Mike Gillespie, um, he aced that hole. Oh, my god. And gosh. it was the most nonchalant ace I've ever seen in my entire life. He just aced it, walked up, and he was like, hey, 
that was pretty good, and just walked away. I was like, <laughs> dude, you, are you kidding me? That's a good ish. Yeah, for sure. All right, here we are, hole 10, double mando, between a power line and power pole. <laughs> yeah, hold nine, but we're close to hold 10. Wait. Wait. This, I don't know. <laughs> this is a 10 on the tee pad, nine on the sign. I'm not entirely sure, but either way, it's a pretty fun hole with the double mando right in front of you. That's a good looking shot, a little short. But I think no, most players are looking to ace this hole. Yeah. No, I think this is hole 10 because this hole's not 370. Yeah. If we can just say it's 370 and I can feel like I just threw my buzz 400 feet. Easy. <laughs> Whenever I have a fairway media filming me, I definitely try to get a few aces. I, uh, so far I'm unsuccessful. That was a great putt from Denny. But uh, someday, someday I'll get it for you, Fairway. It's gonna happen. You want the mini? Okay. I'll make that a goal of mine as well. I'll help you Sounds out. Sounds good. Sounds good. Because uh, aces means views, and views are good for a YouTube video production company. So, and also aces are pretty fun to get. <laughs> mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah, the birdie frame for the card. We're kind of we're kind of slaying. There's a few holes that we probably both groups want back, but uh, so far we're feeling pretty solid. And that is uh, part one. Um, we're all playing pretty good. 24 down for Team Sexy Channel. 21 down for Team Portland. Uh, come on back and uh, check out round two, part two, with Cole Vidal and myself doing commentary. And... And thank you for our tournament sponsors, Infinite Disc, Discraft Discs, Oregon Disc and Wildlife, Fort George Brewery of Astoria, Oregon. They help us make this coverage possible. Um, also, thank you to our 20 Tiger coverage sponsors, Crypt, um, good people, good golf, good times. And yeah, thank you for our media. See you guys for part two.